you know, without exercise, our body is really going to struggle. It's just not going to function the way it's meant to function. We're designed to move. We're designed to have muscles and contract those muscles. That's one big reason why we should care about bone mineral density at whatever our age is, to understand the factors at play. Welcome to the Strength Changes Everything podcast, where we introduce you to the information, latest research, and tools that will enable you to live a strong, healthy life. On this podcast, we will also answer your questions about strength, health, and well-being. I'm Amy Hudson. I own and operate three exercise coach studios. My co-hosts are Brian Sagan, co-founder and CEO of The Exercise Coach, and Dr. James Fisher, leading researcher in evidence-based strength training. And now for today's episode. Welcome back, everybody. This is a hot topic for people who may have osteoporosis in their family or diagnosed with osteopenia. This is a prevalent issue that we run into, especially as we get older, is concern about bone mineral density. And today we're going to talk about the connection between strength and improving that strength and improving bone mineral density. So I'm here with Dr. Fisher again today, and we're going to dive into this issue. Where would you like to start, Dr. Fisher, in talking about this? Well, first of all, I think this is a a hugely important topic and is, is underrated as far as the benefits that we can get from resistance training. Uh, We often think of the strength and the the muscular adaptations, but actually bone health is so important as we age. Um, We could start by talking about how, you know, just generic bone formation and how it evolves over the lifespan. Sure. Let's start there. I mean, what, yeah, what's going on with our, with our bones and how does that change as we get older? Yeah. So we have two types of cells uh, related to our bones. We have osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And osteoblasts do the building. They're there for the regeneration. They're the, the anabolic part, the building up of the bone, uh, which is bone size and bone density and so forth. And obviously, they're far more prevalent in our younger years whilst we're, uh, whilst we're growing, go through puberty and so forth. And then we have osteoclasts, and they, they do the cleaning or the breaking down, and they're the catabolic cells. And it's important to remember that uh, our body is trying to establish a homeostasis. So it's trying to have a balance between anabolic and and catabolic functions. And that's quite normal. Uh, But with bone, we have different times of our life where uh, as a result of our hormone levels, primarily, either the osteoblasts are more dominant in building up in our younger years, or as we age, unfortunately, the osteoclasts are, are taken over and we have fewer osteoblasts and fewer of the building cells to maintain our bone mineral density. And it's typically, we say that over 40 years of age, we lose about 5% of our bone mass every decade. And that obviously accelerates with age. So 5% loss in our 40s is less than a 5% loss in our 50s and, and so forth as we get older. So, we, so you're saying we start losing bone mass in our 30s or 40s, you just said? Yeah, absolutely. And that accelerates as we get older, which reminds me of how sarcopenia works is in our starting in our 30s, the average adult is losing, is it 10% of their muscle mass every decade? Yeah, absolutely. And so since we know there is a connection and correlation between strength and that, that bone, it just makes sense that we're also losing bone mineral density as we get older. The other thing I just heard you say then is hormones play a big role in those weakened bones. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? And is weakened bones uh, more of an issue for women than for men? Uh, Yeah, Uh, hormones do play a big role. So as testosterone levels uh, drop in males, that certainly will impact uh, bone mineral density. But more so as estrogen levels drop in females, especially during menopause, uh, bone mineral density levels drop quite drastically. Um, and in fact, that's where most of the research has been done on postmenopausal women, uh, because there's often sort of the comment that if you can improve bone mineral density in this group of the population, then you can improve it in everybody. How does it differ between males and females? Uh, certainly, it drops off more drastically. Bone mineral density decreases more drastically in females compared to males. Um, and when we undertake an activity or an exercise uh, where we're trying to improve bone mineral density, it will come back quicker in males than it will in females. So that's definitely that's definitely something to consider. 
Uh, it will also come back quicker in younger people. So a lot of the studies sort of say that um, if they've broken people down by decade, then 60 to 70 year olds will increase their bone mineral density quicker than 70 plus year olds. And the way I always sort of think of this is it's important to engage in resistance training exercise early rather than late, because if we're engaging it late, that's fine. We will still make benefits. But if we're engaging it early, we can improve our bone mineral density and our strength and our muscle mass to a greater degree and give ourselves this kind of reserve to combat the typical decline as we age. Yes, that makes total sense. It's a lot easier to proactively build bone mineral density and strength than, than try to restore it once it's lost. And so um, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I mean, once if you're a woman and you're in menopause or you've just gone through that, you will be at a higher risk, you know, for weakened bones. And and we know that as we get even older than that, you know, when people fall um, and break bones, it's very hard to bounce back from that. And so, um, yeah, I think we should that that's one big reason why we should care about bone mineral density at whatever our age is to understand the factors at play. And um, yeah, would you share with me then, you know, what is really the mechanism by which stronger muscles improves our bone strength? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that we can think before we even get to that, because you mentioned falls and, and fractures and things like that, and that's what we tend to think of when we think bone mineral density. But actually, when we lose bone mass, we lose agility and we lose our, our balance can actually start to deteriorate in part because our proprioception, our kind of our ability to coordinate our body is limited or starts to decrease purely because the mass of each limb is constantly changing or constantly decreasing. And that then leads to falls and obviously leads to fractures and so forth. So when we talk about strength training, increasing bone mineral density, the, the key factor is actually the loading mechanism. And, and what we are looking at is that resistance training applies a force against the bone and it's termed the minimal essential strain. Uh, we apply a force against the bone and that makes our body send cells. It, it proliferates osteoblasts to go to the, the bone to send new, to, to regenerate or to generate new bone uh, and increase the bone mineral density. So it's actually the loading process rather than the increasing strength of our muscles or our muscle mass. So it's the actual activity of resistance training and hence why it's so important to engage in this over a longer term and with a sufficiently high frequency. It's worth adding though when we talk about adding enough strain to a, a bone to to send uh, cells to increase the bone mineral density, that we're not overloading the bone so drastically that it might break. The, the minimal essential strain is thought to be around one tenth of what it would take to actually break a bone. So we're certainly not looking at, at doing anything harmful. We're looking at doing something that's totally safe, but is hugely beneficial in enhancing bone mineral density. So what would you say are the biggest considerations in a strength training workout for somebody who's coming in with osteoporosis? Yeah, it's a great question. So historically, we've always thought that you need to use really, really heavy weights to increase bone mineral density. And one of the other mechanisms that incorporates or that, that um, enhances bone mineral density is, is anything with an impact. So actually running can be good at improving bone mineral density. Unfortunately, if somebody doesn't have good bone mineral density or is prone to injuries or obviously can't run, then they can't have that impact, that, that strain through that way. So resistance training is the natural, uh, the natural process. Now, where I said we used to think it was very heavy weights, we used to think it was sort of 80% of one repetition max upwards. So, so you know, a pretty heavy weight. We now, we now think it's anywhere from about 65% of uh, one rep max upwards. So that's probably the equivalent to your muscle, to, to an exercise, sorry, taking uh, anywhere from two to three minutes or anywhere less than that is going to be a sufficiently high load uh, on the skeletal structure to stimulate uh, bone regeneration. Cool. Yeah, that is how our workouts are designed at the exercise coach too. There's a certain percentage of a maximum repetition uh, possible that we assign during the course of a, a rep and that 
sequins uh, continues for anywhere from 60 seconds to 90 seconds up to two minutes. And it's a slow, controlled way to strength train. And so um, our goal would be to to improve that strength in order to decrease risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia. And I know we have a lot of clients that seek us out at our studios because their doctor said, you need to start strength training. What type of exercise is best for osteoporosis or osteopenia? They're, they're told it's strength training, right? And so when they start, you know, we've had clients in three to five months reverse their status from osteoporosis back to osteopenia or people who were concerned about having osteopenia go back into the normal range. And so that's super exciting to see. Of course, if they are going through menopause and they do have a lot of other hormonal factors at play, you know, we not everybody progresses at the same speed as well. So that's something to remember. Absolutely. And there are other lifestyle factors as well. It's worth, uh, it's worth considering that if somebody is going, is, is trying to go through a rapid weight loss or a, a severe weight loss and they're going on extreme calorie restriction, that's negatively going to impact both their muscle mass, but potentially their bone mass as well. We know that vitamins play a big role in, in bone density. So vitamin D plays a big role. We know that protein is beneficial for collagen, which forms the framework of our bones for the minerals to bond to. Uh, it, collagen also gives our bones some degree of flexibility. So if we're not having that intake, then we can have dense but relatively brittle bones. We know that we need some degree of fat in our body to help regulate our hormones, which obviously is our testosterone and our estrogen, uh, which can uh, obviously impact our our osteoblasts and our osteoclasts in the bone formation as well. So. so collagen, protein, fat. What about calcium? A lot of people ask about dietary calcium as a way to combat osteoporosis or maintain bone health. What, what would you say to that or what does the research show about that? You know, I think, I think calcium can be really important. I think that we can trip ourselves up by thinking if I have the right diet or if I take the right supplements, then I, I'm doing the right things. The reality is the strength training part, the resistance training that causes the strain on the bones will stimulate the, the adaptation. And then those other things can kind of support that. But if you don't have that part, you're probably swimming upstream if you just take supplements and you just look after your diet. Uh, you know, without exercise, our body is our body is really going to struggle. It's just not going to function the way it's meant to function. We're designed to move. We're designed to, to have muscles and uh, contract those muscles. And we also know that, that myokines uh, plays a big role in a lot of our uh, bodily function as well. Myokines are, are essentially a peptide that's released from our muscles when they contract that goes off around the body. And we have myokines that go to our liver, or our kidneys, and support that function myokines that go to our brain and we certainly have myokines that go to our bone and to support bo bone regeneration and bone formation so ultimately the exercise is the key part and the nutrition can follow on but if we if we don't get the exercise then the nutrition probably isn't sufficient on its own that is that's crucial to, to hear i think it's easy to believe we can supplement our way into health and without the exercise piece it's like you said, it could be like swimming upstream. You have to exercise too. And I'm picturing those myokines being released in the body and sending all these signals to our bones to, to add mass to our muscles to grow and get stronger. It's like this cascade of, of benefits that they're, that they're going through our body after that, that workout. And it's just such a cool thing to think about all of the things that they're doing behind the scenes after that full effort exercise uh, session. So. That's so cool. Let me share a testimonial. You know, at the exercise coach, I just mentioned we have clients every day who um, see benefits in this area. She, this is Patty, and she said, I chose to go to the exercise coach for several reasons. And I'm so glad that I did. I love the fact that it is a small gym and I have a personal trainer who works with me throughout my session. The, mis the machines challenge me, but I, but don't defeat me. I am competitive and I like to beat my last performance, seeking a new personal best. However, the most important reason I'm going to the exercise coach is my health. I was diagnosed with osteoporosis and was recommended to try weight-bearing exercise rather than taking medicine. I am now on my second package with the exercise coach and I no longer have osteoporosis. 
Joining the exercise coach was the best decision I have ever made for my health. Man, it does not get much better than that, huh? That's phenomenal. That's, I mean, that's exactly what I want to hear, you know, knowing that uh, the strength training research is leading to great practice by the exercise coach and, uh, and it's actually positively impacting people's lives. Uh, you know, that's, that's fantastic to hear. Awesome. Perfect. So any closing thoughts, James, about this topic, any nuggets that you want people to leave this episode remembering uh, when they're thinking about this topic about, about their bone health? Uh, I think the first thing to remember is it's not too late. So if you're diagnosed with osteoporosis, then engaging in resistance training can, can combat reversing that. Um, and, and then second of all, we can think that if, uh, if I haven't been diagnosed with osteoporosis yet, then don't think that's going to happen to somebody else because we all have that slow, progressive decline in physical function. Uh, and some of us have a, more of a stepwise decline where a specific incident occurs and then we can't exercise. So we should always think that resistance training is prehabilitative. It's preventing any decline as much as it's rehabilitative if we've got, if we've got a, a medical or a clinical condition. I love that. Yeah, don't wait for a problem to start. You know, be proactive so that you can avoid a lot of problems starting later on. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Strength Changes Everything podcast. We will see you next time and have a great day. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. Make sure you follow the show on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts so that you never miss another episode. You can find out more information about this episode or connect with the show at strengthchangeseverything.com. Join us next week for another episode. Here's to you and your best health.